Hello and welcome to today's lecture on ATM. In the last lecture, we have discussed about two important packet switched, uh, packet switched network x.25 and frame relay. In this lecture, we shall discuss about another very important packet switch net network that is your ATM. In fact, ATM is the most popular packet switch network of today. Let us see the outline of today's talk. First, I shall discuss about the need for ATM, what is the requirement for ATM. Then, the one very important concept that is being used in ATM that is cell switching. I shall elaborate on the concept of cell, switch, cell switching. Then, I shall focus on ATM architecture and as we, as we shall see, ATM is based on virtual circuit connections. We shall discuss how virtual circuits are set up or what are the different types of virtual circuits used in ATM and also we shall discuss about the switching types used in ATM and the physical layer device that is the switching fabric used in ATM also we shall discuss that. Then the, the, as we shall see, ATM has got three different layers, physical, ATM and AAL. We shall discuss about these three fu functions of these three layers in detail. And on completion, the students will be able to understand the need for ATM. They will be able to explain the concept of self swi cell switching. They will understand the architecture of ATM. They will be able to explain the operation of virtual connections and switching types used in ATM and they will be able to explain the function of switching fabric of ATM and again as I mentioned, they will be able to explain the functions of the three ATM layers, the physical, ATM and ALL. So, let us start with the need for ATM. If we look at the existing technologies, you will find that it has got several limitations. First one is the different protocols used uses different frame sizes. The size of the frames can be small, can be large. In other words, the frame size is variable and for complex networks, information carried in the header in is extensive leading to inefficiency. That means, the information carried in the header, header is quite big and it contains lots of information and as, as we know, bigger the header, it is essentially an overhead on the network. So, a, a bigger header leads to a higher overhead and leads, leads to inefficiency. To reduce inefficiency, the size of the data field is increased or it is made variable as I have mentioned. Now, variety of frame sizes makes traffic unpredictable and inconsistent data rate delivery. That means, whenever the frame sizes are different, then as we shall see in uh, with the help of a diagram, the it will make the data traffic unpredictable. When a particular frame will reach, how long it will take, what will be the delay, all these things become unpredictable. And as a result, data rate delivery cannot be ensured. And as we know, TDM is time division multiplexing is commonly used to make use of the broadband technology, because the transmission media that is being used has higher bandwidth, we would like to make use of the broadband technology and for that purpose, time division multiplexing is commonly used. 
and ATM technology has been developed to overcome, overcome some of the limitations that I have already mentioned. And the most important features, design features of ATM are mentioned here. First of all, it makes use of the high bandwidth transmission media, uh, which has lesser probability of error. Uh, uh, most of the earlier protocols, for example, X.25 and frame relay uses transmission media of lesser bandwidth, for example, twisted pair or coaxial cable. On the other hand, ATM uses uh, optical fiber. In other words, uh, nowadays optical fiber is the uh, most popular transmission media uh, available today. And that as you know that optical fiber has got very high bandwidth and the post probability of error is much reduced. So, that means the frames that are trans transmitted through the uh, transmission media is less prone to error. So, we have to exploit these two features uh, in ATM that is one design goal and interfacing capability with the existing systems. Uh, Obviously, whenever we go for new technology having high bandwidth, low data rate, I mean uh, low error pro pro probability, we have to also uh, be able to uh, use the interface with the existing systems, so that the data coming from the existing systems can be transported through ATM. And also, it is necessary to have cost effective implementation. And as I have already discussed in detail earlier that uh, our telecom industry uses some uh, hierarchies like T1, T2, T3 and so on. So, the ATM should support these hierarchies that was the one of the design features. And uh, as we know the uh, uh, most of the uh, most of the circuits uh, are uh, circuit switched. For example, our public telephone system is circuit switched. On the other hand, the circuit switch ne network has got a limit number of limitations. That is why it is essential to have packet switch network. However, it should be connection oriented. That means, it will be it will it must be based on virtual circuit switching concept to ensure accuracy and predictability, which cannot be ensured by datagram uh, uh, technique and more fun functionality in hardware than software for higher speed. And it is also uh, one of the design goal was that most of the functionalities will be implemented with the help of hardware rather than software, so that it is fast and can be implemented with lower cost. Uh, let us look at the limitations of the uh, variable size frame multiplexing. So, here we see that in the present day technology, the frames are of variable size. So, whenever there is a big frame in front of a small frame, this uh, for example, A is a much bigger frame than the B 1 or C 1. And because A takes quite long time to uh, for transmission, for propagation to, uh, for to go through the medium, the uh, uh, the B 1 will suffer, it will it will suffer because it will take, it will suffer much longer delay. That means, different frame sizes make traffic unpredictable as I have already mentioned and data rate delivery can vary dramatically. This cannot be tolerated by real time traffic, for example, video, uh, voice, whenever it is communicated, this, this cannot be tolerated. For, for example, audio and video frames are moreover. Uh, as we shall see, the frames used by uh, audio and video are smaller in size. So, uh, the present day technology that means, X.25 or uh, frame relay uh, does not really uh, take in take exploits this very small size of the audio and video frames. So, uh, these limitations are overcome by using cell switching. So, cell is considered to be a fixed size block of information. So, uh, fixed size, so it is not a variable size and usually the size is very small. For example, in ATM as we shall see, the size of the cell is only 53 bytes and all the frames are of the same size and the cell is used at the basic unit of data exchange. 
and also ATM uses asynchronous time division multiplexing. We have already discussed about the limitations of synchronous time division multiplexing and how asynchronous time division multiplexing overcomes the limitations we have already discussed and that is being used in ATM. So, here we see the frames uh, the, the these are the various cells coming from different sources and because of asynchronous time division multiplexing uh, as you can see uh, first A 1 then C 1 then A 2 they do not have the fixed slots and as a consequence uh, the these cells will be uh, will go uh, in uh, in different I mean the order is different in different frames and so uh, because of asynchronous communication. However, because of small uh, because of high speed and smaller frame size the cells coming from different sources will reach the destination much more quickly. So, these are the advantages in spite of interleaving none suffers long delay. We have seen in the previous slide you see there is some interleaving A 1 then C 1 then A 2 then B 1 then D 1 then A 2. For example, A 1 and then A 2 is appearing somewhere here in between you have got several other cells. In spite of this interleaving the none suffers long delay because of high speed and also because of small cell size the a particular link cannot monopolize the medium and as a result none suffers long delay and cells reach different destination in the form of continuous stream because of high speed and small size of cells. That means, the data frames or video frames coming from different sources will reach the destination in the form of continuous cells, continuous stream of cells and they will reach with much less uh, delay and as a consequence it will be possible to support this kind of real time traffic. So, switching and multiplexing by hardware at the cell level makes implementation inexpensive and faster. So, I should add and faster. So, this is the basic uh, the uh, advantages of cell switching. However, there are some limitations uh, for example, uh, although since the cell size is small and as we shall see header has got 5 bytes and the payload is 48 bytes. So, that makes this is the size of a cell and as a consequence the overhead is 9.4 percent that is quite high. So, ATM has got high overhead in terms of uh, the uh, that uh, header because because of bigger header relative to the size of the cell, but uh, the advantages actually is more than the limitations that uh, that is being imposed by this large overhead as we shall see. And uh, also it has got different types of delays for example, packetization delay at the source for example, data is coming from audio uh, sources. So, they will be packetized in the form of cells since the audio data will arrive at a smaller rate the there will be some delay in packetization in making the packets. This is known as PD delay packetization delay at the source. Then the transmission and propagation delay whenever you are sending over a long communication media if the distance is very long uh, as you know there will be some propagation delay and that propagation delay is usually relatively higher compared to the transmission delay because of smaller frame size the transmission time will not be small will not be small because the speed is high it is about 155 megabits per second as a result to transmit 54 bytes will not take long time. However, the pro propagation time can be quite long and these two are added where this propagation time is more significant than the transmission time and this time is known as the uh, TD or transmission delay although the propagation time is more uh, significant. Then the queuing delay at each switch. So, whenever the packets arrive at a switch uh, uh, several such packets may arrive from different source sources simultaneously as a result there will be some delay in serializing or queuing the packets. So, that will lead to some delay this is known as QD. So, QD is another and then fixed processing delay at each switch. 
you know that uh, the, the switches will take some time as we shall see for the purpose of error checking and, uh, uh, and synchronization and this, uh, this processing delay at which switch will lead to some delay. And finally, the jitter compensation or depacketization delay at the destination. Since the packets are arriving with different delays, it is necessary to buffer them. For example, when we are when you are playing a uh, audio cassette, audio or data, or you are playing a video, uh, then it is necessary to buffer them, then send at continuous rate, and that leads to the de uh, depackagization delay, so that the jitter compensation can be done at the destination. So you see that the uh, whenever a packet passes through the ATM network, different kinds of delays are suffered by it but these have to be taken into consideration in designing the network uh, and the these this can be uh, we have the proper uh, by proper architecture and design let us look at the atm architecture here as you can see these are the user interfaces these are the user interfaces and this, this is your ATM network where you have got a number of ATM switches. And this interface between the user and the switch is known as user to network interface. So, these are all user to network interfaces and here these are all user to network interfaces. On the other hand, the interfaces between uh, a pair of switches uh, between uh, I mean pair of switches is known as network to network interface. So, these interfaces are different because these interfaces this UNI interfaces may be relatively slower in speed compared to the uh, NNI interfaces they can be relatively of much uh, faster much higher uh, speed because of time division multiplexing being used. So, uh, two different types of interfaces are specified in ATM architecture one is UNI between user to network and between and another is NNI between net to between switches in the ATM network. And uh, the, uh, the trans communication take place by using virtual uh, circuit and uh, there are three components involved in it. One is the transmission path, transmission path is essentially the transmission media that physical media that is being used uh, while doing the transmission. Uh, on the other hand, the virtual path and virtual circuits, these two are two components with the help of which the virtual connections are defined. And the virtual path essentially within, within each transmission path, there are several virtual paths. For example, uh, I can give you the example of two cities connect, connected by uh, highways. So, all the highways refers to the virtual path. So, here you have got say one city and here you have got, you have got another city. So, there can be several, uh, several highways linking to it. So, this is your uh, you can say that this link is the transmission path and uh, within each transmission path you have got virtual paths, VPs, several VPs you can have. So, this is your transmission path and you have got several VPs inside. So, essentially all the VPs together form the transmission path between the city C1 and another city C2. And then within each virtual path, you can have several virtual circuits. For example, a highway can have several lanes, 5 lane, 8 lane like that. They form the virtual circuits within a virtual path. So, you find that uh, this is the transmission path which links between link which is essentially a uh, physical medium between two nodes or between a user and a uh, and a uh, node or switch and within this tp you will have several virtual paths and within each virtual path there will be a number of virtual circuits so this kind of hierarchy is used for the convenience as we the and it, it will provide a number of advantages. And these are the advantages of virtual paths. 
first of all it, sim it, it simplified the network architecture, you can organize it in a hierarchical manner and this leads to increased network performance and reliability and it reduces, it uh, reduces processing and short connection setup time. Because of this hierarchy, the connection setup time will be small and uh, the processing time also will be less and also it enhances network services. So, these are the advantages provided by this virtual path concepts. So, uh, let us look at the characteristics of virtual circuit connections. First of all, it has to provide some quality of service that means uh, delay, jitter, variation in delay, bandwidth, bus size. So, these are the quality of service parameters that is being, uh, these are uh, has to be specified. Then the switched and semi permanent virtual channel connections. So, as we shall see, we shall have permanent virtual circuit as well as switched virtual circuit. We shall discuss about that, that is being supported by ATM. Then the cell sequence integrity, whenever the uh, packets travel through the same virtual circuits, the packets are delivered in order. As a consequence, the cell sequence integrity is preserved and at the other end there will be no need to uh, put them together in order. That means, out of order delivery will not take place. Then the traffic parameter negotiation and user uses monitoring uh, is also performed uh, with the help of this virtual circuit connections. So, these are the typical characteristics and the, uh, the virtual connection is defined by a pair of numbers known as VPI and VCI. So, VPI stands for virtual path identifier and VCI stands for virtual circuit identifier. So, in case of uh, UNI between the user and network interface, the VPI is 8 bit and VCI is 16 bit. Uh, and on the other hand, between, N between the two networks or switches, the VPI is 12 bit and VCI is 16 bit. So, that means, as you can see, the a particular virtual path is identified by 24 bit in case of user to network interface and it has got 28 bit in case of network to network interface. So, that, that provides enormous number of virtual circuits to be created uh, between an user and a network and also between two networks and obviously, this number is much larger. And like X.25 and frame relay, ATM uses two types of connections. One is permanent virtual circuit and another is switch virtual circuit. In permanent virtual circuits, this is established by the network provider. And those, uh, those numbers that VPI, as I have mentioned, that VPI and VCI, these are all provided by the uh, network provider in case of PVC. On the other hand, Whenever in case of switch virtual circuit, this uses the services of the, you know that ATM has got no network layer. So, it has to take the help of one upper layer. For example, internet protocol is a network layer protocol that net it, the ATM has to take the help of one network layer protocol to set up the connection and uh, to establish connection and that time those uh, VPI and uh, those uh, VCI are defined. Let us see how exactly it happens. So, uh, a setup signal goes, setup packet goes from one side to the another side, then the uh, call processing message comes uh, to this end and then the signal connect comes to one end and then connect acknowledge signal goes to the other end. So, that this with this, this the connection is established and the uh, that VCI and VPI are all defined and then data transfer can take place as you can see data transfer is taking place from the uh, from destination to source to destination between two end users and after that the data transmission is finished the connection is released uh, and uh, the, the, the release connection signal is sent and release completion signal, signal comes from the other end and with that ends the uh, 
I mean, uh, I mean a part whenever a particular connection is set up in switch virtual circuit, this is how uh, it takes it uh, takes place. That means the sequence of events that takes place in switch virtual circuit. I have explained. Now let us look at the uh, different types of the, the switching types used in ATM. As we know, the switches are used to route cells from source to destination endpoints. So, it does routing and switching and there are two types of switches are used. One is known as VP, another is known as VPC. So, routing is done using VPI for switching, the VCI remains the same. Usually between two uh, switches the switching is usually in the form of VP switch normally. That means, routing is done only by using the VPI, the VCI remains same. For example, this is one interface, and this is and this is another interface and this is a ATM switch. The packet is a cell is coming uh, to interface 1 and it is going towards uh, the interface 4 and that this uh, has already been set up. And now you see the VCI part, the VCI part 63 is same. So, it is not same, it is not different, only difference is the uh, that VPI part. So, VPI here is 75 at the in, in input interface and the uh, VPI is 83 at the uh, output interface. So, the switching is done, it comes here and used by looking at this table, uh, the VP switch identifies uh, to I mean where, I mean where, to which port it will be assigned and what will be the VPI to be provided to that. So, the cell is forwarded in this form with the help of these two numbers. That means, the cell header will have that VPI VCI information and with the help of that routing or forwarding will take place. On the other hand, in VPC switch, routing is done using both VPI and VCI and usually the uh, that UNI interface uses this kind of switching and where both the uh, that VCI and VPI are be, is being used. Uh, so, this is the cell arriving at the interface 1 with the VCI and VPI 78 and 83, VPI, VCI is 83 and VPI is 78 and it will the output will be it will be forwarded to interface 4 and when it when it is forwarded it assigns different VPI and VCI. So, VPI, uh, uh, VPI is now 93 and VCI is now, so uh, sorry VCI is 83, VPI is 78, here VCI is 93 and VPI is 68. So, we see, so it is being modified by the switch and then it is forwarded. So, by looking this kind of table, the cell switching and multiplexing is being done with the help with the help of the uh, switches. Now, you may be asking this is how this is done by the hardware, Hard, it has to be done by the hardware and you have to use some kind of switching fabric. One type of switching fabric that we have already discussed that is your uh, that is your uh, uh, Benian tree. <coughs> Benian tree. So, this is the Benian tree shown and here it is shown it has got 8 inputs and 8 outputs. So, 8 input and 8 output lines are being shown here. So, uh, as you can see the cells are arriving here and it can go uh, to uh, any one of these lines. So, directions are uh, shown in a different actually these are output lines and these are the input lines. So, so whenever it comes to 1 it can go to one any one of the uh, output lines and it is being buffered. So, these are buffered here you can see uh, each line can have input and output actually it can be uh, full duplex it has to be full duplex. Here it is coming then uh, 0 to the 0 interface it can go to any one of the interfaces and then this is the switching is done with the help of uh, the uh, these bits. So, inside it has got micro switches. So, these micro switches are used to do the switching. 
that means depending on this bit the uh, depending on this 1 or 0 the input will be will go to this end or this end obviously at a time it will be able to switch one of the two inputs either to this or to this so if they want to go to the same output then uh, the, then uh, what will happen is known as uh, collision so whenever the destinations are different even then this collision can occur however the switching can be done in this way with the help of different bits for example if the destination is 6 then uh, this it goes that input say from 1 it has to say let us take from one, 0 it has to go to 6 so from 0 this bit is 1 so it will go here this path and see this 6 is 1 1 0 so again it will be it will go here then it is 0 so it will go here to this particular output line so in this way the switching done however collision can occur so uh, with the help of uh, whenever you have it has got n inputs a Banyan uh, tree switch uh, will have uh, log 2 n stages. So, here uh, the number is 8, so it will have 3 stages as you can see and in each stage there, there will be about n by 2 switches, micro switches. So, n by 2 is 4, we have got 4 micro switches and 3 stages in this 8 by 8 switch. Unfortunately, uh, as I mentioned, because of internal collision, even for the for different destinations uh, com, com, coming from different input sources, there can be internal collision. That internal collision is can be avoided by using a using which is known as batcher banyan uh, switch. So, what is that? It combines three different modules. One is the batcher switch. What the batcher switch does? Whatever input it receives, it does the reshuffling how in terms of the uh, output uh, port output link to which it is going that means all the inputs are reshuffled based on the destination lines so the, the it, this batcher switch does that and unfortunately there is a possibility that some of the uh, the packet the cells coming from some of the inputs may have the same destination port destination line so in such a case uh, it cannot be sent simultaneously to the banyan tree so to uh, so uh, this this is being overcome by the by using this trap module so trap module will buffer them then per tick one cell will be forwarded to the uh, banyan tree so in this way the batcher banyan uh, switch can perform the atm switching and it overcomes the limitations of the simple banyan tree and this kind of switching fabric can be used uh, in implementing the atm switches now let, uh, let us look at the different layers used in atm as i mentioned atm has got three different layers physical atm and all all stands for application adaptation layer so, physical layer defines the transmission medium, usually it is optical fiber, bit transmission encoding and signal conversions. So, it may be necessary to convert from electrical to optical and optical to electrical. So, physical layer does that. So, this was originally based on sonnet. That means, we have already discussed about the synchronous optical network. ATM was based on sonnet and as we know, then in case of ATM, the lowest and uh, rate is 155.52 megabits per second. So, this is the minimum bit rate and it has got higher rates. So, with provision of however, the ATM not only can not only use sonnet, it has the provision for other technologies. That means, it, it can use the, it may also use the T1 lines if necessary, but it has been explicitly designed for sonnet. Then the ATM layer performs routing, traffic management, switching and multiplexing. So, the ATM layer performs the important function of routing, traffic management, switching and multiplexing. On the other hand, the ALL layer 
application adaptation layer accepts frames from an upper layer protocol and maps them into ATM cells. That means, the packets or frames coming from different applications, they may be of different sizes. The ALL layer does the uh, mapping to the ATM cells, that means it will break them up, segment them and also it will do the uh, combination. Let us see how it is being done. And here the functionality of nodes and stations are defined, as you can see here the functionality of the user stations has got uh, three layer functionality, physical, ATM and ALL application adaptation layer. On the other hand, the switches has got only two different layers, functionality of two different layer ATM and physical. So, all the switches have got ATM and physical layers within this ATM network. Only the user interfaces has got three layers of functionality, physical, ATM and ALL. And here it shows the functionality of different layers and how it actually happens. So, here the information stream is coming from upper layer, the ALL layer does the segmentation of the frames, so in terms of 48 uh, bytes. So, it does it breaks it in terms of 48 bytes and the ATM layer puts the header, uh, uh, converts it into ATM cells and that it has got the, it introduces that 5 byte he header. So, with that it is it gets converted into cells each of 53 bytes and then it passes through sonnet layer and we have already uh, discussed about the sonnet layer as we know uh, the popular ones are 12 C and 3 C which is commonly used uh, for ATM and we know as we know the data rates are 155.52 and for 12 it is 622.08 megabits per second. And of course, uh, there is a, it can uh, the, as I mentioned that, that uh, T 1 lines that D S 3 protocol can also be supported, but primarily uh, it uses these two. So, here it is a, explained with the help of this sonnet uh, 3 C. So, sonnet uh, S T S 3 C this is the frame. So, in this frame as we know we have got uh, we have got the uh, we have got the uh, the, the uh, packet overhead header then sonnet overhead header uh, line overhead header so these headers are there so nine bytes and then one byte for this is one byte for the packet overhead packet overhead uh, and remaining are used to pack the ATM cells so as you can see nine into two sixty byte this is the SPE this is the uh, synchronous packet uh, and in this this in this uh, uh, in this the uh, atm cells are packed and with with this uh, we can have 44 atm cells can be packed in this and here uh, that uh, 5 bit uh, that 5 byte header that is being added by the atm cells are elaborated so it has got two different types of two different types of uh, headers for uh, UNI user to network interface and network to network interface. Main difference is coming from this GFC. GFC is a generic flow control. This generic flow control is is it was assumed to be between the user and here is your ATM network between the switch. So, this flow control was assumed to be used by between the user and the network and that is why 4 bits were left aside by the designer of ATM. However, this is not commonly used. So, we may consider this GFC as a flaw in the design. So, it is not commonly used. Then VPI uh, that virtual private identifier uh, is 8 bit as I mentioned be between the user and the network layer for UNI. On the other hand, it is 12 bit uh, for the NNI uh, interface. So, whenever it is between two switches for that it can be uh, 12 bit VPI and uh, six, uh, 12 bit VPI and 
12 bit 16 bit VCI. So, VCI is 16 bit for both cases. Then the payload type uh, it has got uh, uh, it has got 3 bits that payload type uh, specifies what kind of payload a particular cell is carrying. So, this is the meaning are explained here. For example, if it is 0, 0, 0, the most significant bit specifies whether it is user or management uh, data. So, if it is 0, then it is user data, but again user data can be of two types, type 1 or type 0 depending on the least significant bit and the middle bit is used to specify the conversation. So, whenever it is 0, 0, 0, it is user data that means that cell corresponds to an user and the, there is no conversation in the network and it is a type 0 type uh, payload. On the other hand, whenever this bit is 1, it is user data, no conversation and in type 1 and whenever this bit is set to 1, user data conversation uh, has occurred in the network and type 0 and whenever this is 1, it is type 1. When this is 100, 0, 0, it is a maintenance information between adjacent switches. That means, the two switches can exchange some information and that management information is specified with the help of this payload type 100. 0, 0. On the other hand, this maintenance information can be between source to destination. So, between end source and destination in that case, it can be the payload type is 101. And this 110, when, uh, this payload type is used for resource management and 111 has been left for future. So, this is your payload type and CLP essentially provides you cell loss priority. There is only one bit specifies for that cell loss priority and the cell loss priority specifies use is used for conservation control. As we know, as we know, whenever conservation occurs, it may be necessary to discard packet and that is done with the help of this uh, payload type bit. Whenever it is 0, uh, when it, whenever it is 1, whenever this payload type bit is 1, that means packet is of higher priority and whenever it is PT it is 0, this is the cell is of lower priority. That means, uh, when conversation occurs, the cells with PT is equal to 0 can be discarded uh, and as long as uh, cells with PT is equal to 0 are available, only those cells are discarded that cells with PT is equal to 1 are not touched. However, whenever conversation is high, uh, that time these cells may be discarded. And uh, this uh, there is 8 bit header error control, we shall discuss about it in more detail. So, this header error control, it is a 8 bit field and the characteristic polynomial that is being used is shown here x to, x to the power 8 plus x square plus x plus 1. So, this is being used for uh, error detection and control uh, correction. Uh, as you can see here, uh, normally when there is no error, it is in correction mode and uh, whenever there is error, it goes to detection mode. Uh, so, whenever you can, you have got single bit error, then it can be corrected. As you can see, whenever there is single bit error, it can be corrected then it goes to the detection mode and on the other hand, whenever it has got multi bit error is detected, then the cell is discarded because it cannot be corrected. That means, uh, each switch does the error checking. So, it, it will have some overhead uh, although it is done by hardware and whenever there is single bit error, it can be corrected because it, is, it uses 8 bit for error correction purpose and it does the uh, error correction only for the header part. That means, uh, the previous 8 bit we have seen that uh, here you have got how many bytes 1, 2, 3 and 4. That means, on these 32 bits or 4 bytes error correction is done and this, uh, this code is that uh, CRC check bits are kept here. So, uh, HEC operation is performed at the receiving end uh, <coughs> for error correction purpose and error detection purpose. Now, the nodes make use of uh, fixed cell size and HEC to determine the cell boundaries implicitly. 
one important feature of cell switching is that there is no flag bits to identify the beginning or end of a cell. So, how a cell can be a beginning or a end of a cell can be identified that is also being done with the help of this header error control bits in an implicit manner with the help of cell boundaries. The, uh, the that state transition diagram used for that purpose is shown here. Normally, the it is the line the say the switches are in the hunt mode, then it does the it checks in the bit by bit synchronization is done and whenever correct HEC is re, uh, header, header error correction is received, then it does cell by cell checking. So, it is in a pre synchronization phase and whenever it receives uh, not uh, several consecutive header error controls correct HECs, then it is goes to synchronization mode. That means, usually this value of B is not less than 6, not less than 6 usually 5. So, if you keep it 5 that means, 5 uh, cells are received correctly that means, header error co corrections is correct then it goes to synchronization. Then, then each and every cells are now synchronized with the help of this uh, header error correction and then as the cells arrive with 53 byte, 53 byte once it gets synchronized then all the subsequent cells are synchronized. However, whenever there is incorrect uh, uh, header error controls it, it should it must have consecutive uh, 7 uh, less than 7 consecutive incorrect header error header uh, header error con control flags are received, then again it goes back to the hunt mode. So, we find that the cell delineation is performed with the help of the header error control bits and uh, synchronization is done with the help of this, uh, this particular field in an implicit manner. Now, ATM supports a number of service categories and these are divided in uh, five different classes. One is constant bit rate, for example, it is coming from the telephone network T 1 circuit. So, it, uh, it, uh, it comes in a constant bit rate. On the other hand, the second cat type is variable bit rate and it is of real time. So, say real time video conferencing or it may be coming from uh, may it may be video data and it is coming in a, in a streamed form without any compression, then it is real time video or audio data it can be. On the other hand, whenever it is real time, it is non real time variable bit rate non real time say for example, multimedia email, then it can be uh, uh, variable bit rate non real time. On the other hand, available bit rate browsing the web is the application, the whatever uh, some minimum bit rate is specified. However, uh, if higher bit rate is available that is being used that is used in the applications like browsing the web, when you are browsing the web and then unspecified bit rate. Uh, so, the no specific bit rate is specified, whatever uh, uh, bit rate is available UBR uh, that is unspecified bit rate you that can be used for background file transfer and other purposes. So, real time video conferencing is going on in addition to that you can do background file uh, transfer with unspecified bit rate. So, these are the different types of service categories uh, identified by ATM designers and accordingly the ALL layer frames are um, it has got different types of uh, uh, five different different types for example, uh, uh, that ALL layer has got uh, all the originally five now it is divided into four different types. For example, ALL uh, 1 is for constant bit rate stream and ALL 2 for short packets coming from say video or audio applications, ALL 3 or 4 for conventional packet switching and ALL 5 for packets not requiring no sequencing and no error control. That means, for simple applications when sequencing is not required and error control is not required this particular uh, framing can be used. And this LL layer is divided into two parts, one is that uh, CS sub layer, sub layer 
that that perform convergence sublayer, convergence sublayer and segmentation and reassembly sublayer. So these two functions are different. It perform as I said, it has to perform con segmentation and reassembly, and also it has to perform the convergence. So let us see, look at the four different uh, types of ALL frames that is being used. How it is being done? So this is being used for constant bit rate stream as I have already mentioned. So you have got constant bit streams are coming and the CS layer has got is de it divides it into four 47 byte packets and that SAR sub layer that segmentation and reassembly sub layer puts an header which has got two fields that uh, SN and SNP sequence number and uh, sequence number protection that means for checking purposes. So these uh, 8 bits are used as header in the is added then it goes to the ATM layer which forms that 55 bit uh, uh, cell with 5 byte header and I have already discussed about this 5 by 5 byte header then it is transmitted through the network. On the other hand in, in case of ALL2 uh, which is used for low bit rate and short frame packets such as audio, video and fax. As I have mentioned, the packets are smaller in size, say 24 bytes. So to make it uh, 47 byte, uh, you have to add, an, add a pad. So here as you can see, the segmentation and reassembly header is little different, having different fields like LI, PPT, UI and HFC. I am not uh, discussing all these details and uh, that SAR header is SF. So you see two headers are added, the CS layer puts a header, the SAR layer puts a header, uh, here it is 3 byte CS layer and here it is 1 byte and remaining part is filled up with pad. So to make it 48 byte altogether which goes to the ATM layer and ATM layer puts the uh, header 5 byte header and sends it through the switches. And here that ALL uh, 3 and 4 which are used both for uh, conventional applications with uh, which can support both connection oriented and datagram type applications both and here you see the data packet uh, up to 64 kilobytes can be supported and as you can see data is divided into uh, packets by the ALL layer. Uh, so each with say header and teller. So header and tellers are added and uh, uh, this 44 byte payload are taken from the upper layer and then it forms the 48 byte uh, uh, cell which goes to the ATM layer which forms the uh, 50, uh, 53, 50, uh, 53 byte cell and that is being transmitted through the network. And then ALL5. Uh, simple and effective efficient adaptation layer as you can see this is the frame format here also the data packets are up to 64 uh, kilobytes and here as you can see uh, there is no uh, sequence number no sequencing and flow con uh, other control flow control is needed and that's why uh, this is known as simple and efficient adaptation layer where there is no header or teller no error control or segment uh, segmentation is done i mean uh, sequencing is done no sequencing no error error detection is performed that goes to the uh, atm uh, layer and which forms the packetization then it sends it and let us see how congestion control is performed in atm uh, since conventional congestion control schemes are inadequate for ATM because of the following reasons. The majority of traffic is not amenable to flow control because it uses real time traffic where you cannot enforce flow control. Feedback is slow due to reduce cell transmission time because the you know that propagation time is longer than transmission time. So feedback is slow, relatively slow. Variety of applications supported by the ATM networks as I have already mentioned there are five different types of uh, packets are transmitted and very high speed of switching and transmission because of this the conventional congestion control cannot be worked and congestion control performed in three different ways admission control when a station wants a 
uh, new uh, 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 several techniques are used. Admission control when a station wants a new virtual circuit, it specifies the traffic to be offered and services expected. If the network is unable to offer the service without adversely affecting the existing connections, the cell call is rejected. So, as we, as we have seen, a particular circuit may not be allowed to set up. Then resource reservation is done. Uh, so, a setup message is earmark uh, bandwidth along uh, the line traverses and the bandwidth available is measured and which is being used. Then rate based congestion control is performed, where after each k data cells a sender sends a resource management cell. I have already mentioned about that and as it gets back to the center after reaching the destination comes back to the center, it comes to know the minimum acceptable rate. So, now it is time to give you the review questions. Why are ben the benefits? What? Uh, why are the benefits of cell switching used in ATM, or rather, what are the benefits uh, of cell switching used in ATM? What are the relationship between TPs, VPs, and VCs? Second question. Third question is how is an ATM virtual connection identified? Fourth question is how cell boundaries are performed in ATM? Fifth question is how congestion control is performed in ATM? Here are the answers of lecture number 23. First one was in what layer x.25 operates? Answer is x.25 operates in the network layer. Second question was what are the key functions of x.25 protocol? Answer is key functions of x.25 protocol are call control packets are used for call setup as we know, multiplexing of virtual circuit takes place in packet layer and both link layer and packet layer performs flow control and error control as we have discussed in detail. Third question was what limitations of x.25 were overcome in frame relay protocol? Answer is in x.25 overhead on the user equipment and the networking equipment is very high and it is also slower which are overcome in frame relay. As you have seen that x.25 can go up to 64 kilobits per second and frame relay minimum rate is 1.544. Uh, megabits per second. So, it is much faster and lesser overhead. Fourth question it was distinguish between permanent virtual circuit and switched virtual connection used in frame relay. In per permanent virtual circuit connection, the path is fixed and data transfer occurs as with virtual calls, but no call setup or transmission is required. On the other hand, in switched virtual circuit connection, the path is dynamically estab established virtual circuit using call setup and call clearing procedure and many other circuits can share the same path as we have already discussed in detail. Fifth question and the last question was how congestion control is performed in frame relay network. As we, as we have discussed in detail, it uses two bits for congestion control, backward explicit congestion notification and forward explicit congestion notification, these two bits. In addition to that, it does the packet discarding it uses, it use, if users do not respond to congestion notices, packets are discarded uh, by the switches. So, with this we come to the end of today's lecture on ATM and also the applications of uh, uh, packet switch networks. So, frame x.25, frame relay and ATM. Thank you.